On July 25th, the New York Times reported, a woman named Peggy Jones and her husband, Wendell, learned a lesson in a most unusual way. They were home doing yard work on their six-acre property in Silsby, Texas, probably with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> About a hundred miles from Houston. It started when a snake fell from the clear blue sky and landed right on Peggy Jones's arm. The snake wrapped itself around her forearm and then squeezed it tightly. It hissed and lunged at her neck and face. But then Mrs. Jones re realized the snake was an unwitting victim too. Evidently, a brown and white hawk flying overhead had fumbled and dropped the four and a half long scaly creature from its beak. The snake tumbled from the hawk's grip straight to Mrs. Jones's arm. The hawk, seeing it had lost its grip on the snake, then swooped down to reclaim its serpentine dinner from Peggy Jones's arm. The hawk snatched, scratched, and jabbed at her arm in its attempt to get the snake back and fly away. Each time, its powerful talons slashed her forearm. At one point, the bird dragged Mrs. Jones's arm up into the air and over her head. On the fourth try, it successfully uncoiled the snake and flew away. Peggy Jones's arm was badly scratched, bruised, and punctured. She was bandaged and given antibiotics at the hospital. Though physically recovering, she continues to suffer from the trauma of it all. Still, Peggy Jones said, I consider myself the luckiest person alive. I was first attacked by a snake, and then by a hawk, and I lived to tell about it. Who says miracles don't happen anymore? Actually, a study done a few years ago by the Pew Forum on Religion showed that 80% of all Americans believe in miracles, including a surprisingly high number of millennials. Yes, our young adults in their 20s and 30s, our children and grandchildren, may not attend religious services or affiliate with a particular religion, but overwhelmingly they say they believe in miracles. Judaism has a complicated relationship with miracles. The Hebrew scriptures are filled with miracles that are said to come from a personal God that has the power to change the course of nature. The God of the Bible, as we know, meets out punishment in the form of floods and fires and rewards good behavior by causing farmers' crops to grow. This God sends signs and wonders to reveal God's self to humanity. God in the Bible provides water and manna in the desert, helps the children of Israel wage war against impossible enemies, and keeps our human bodies functioning. Throughout the centuries, some Jewish thinkers have seen miracles as perfectly compatible with Judaism as supernatural mysteries that we cannot always explain or understand. Others in Jewish circles have flatly denied miracles, clinging instead to uber-rational and scientific explanations. There are those who have even called miracles sacrilegious. Today, we have believers and non-believers alike and everything in between. Modern Orthodox Rabbi Yitz Greenberg says, and I quote, we live in an age of more miracles than ever before, end of quote. Perhaps it is just that we don't have a consistent definition for what a miracle is. 
Miracles have traditionally competed with religion and science. Yet times have changed, and for many today, science and religion are actually partners. In a 2020 article in Scientific American, Francis Collins, the then director of the NIH, the National Institute of Health, was interviewed. He is one of the most well-respected physicians and scientists in the country. He is the recipient of numerous awards and grants and was the lead investigator of the Human Genome Project. He served the NIH from 2009 to 2021. An avowed atheist for much of his life, Collins became a devout Christian in 1978 and sees science and religion in harmony with one another. He said, and I quote, the God of the Bible is also the God of the genome. God can be worshiped in the cathedral or in the laboratory, end quote. Collins refused to view science and religion in binary terms. And whereas he, the scientist, does not ever expect to see spontaneous healing as a medical doctor, he does consider the life-saving treatments and therapies that are developed as miracles in their own right. These miracles emerge out of serious research, decades of work in labs, careful drug trials, and novel experimental therapies. The point for Collins, the religionist, is less concerned about God and more interested in humanity's role in miracles. He said, we may understand a lot about biology. We may understand a lot about how to prevent illness, and we may understand the human lifespan. But, Collins maintains, true miracles happen when humanity get, is, uses our God-given free will to be kinder to one another and to the world. For Collins and perhaps many of us, miracles happen when we pursue the road of progress, when we seize the opportunity to turn social ills into social justice. This is the Jewish view of miracles, one in which we are co-authors of creation with God. Rabbi Dov Peretz Elkins points out that this understanding of miracles inspires us to look beyond the splitting of the sea or the sun standing still in the sky to miracles that are more down to earth. Miracles are the daily events that we often see but take for granted. The rising and setting of the sun, the workings of our bodies, the extraordinary performance of our brains. Miracles are the everyday occurrences that make our lives holy. Albert Einstein once said, there are only two ways to live our lives. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. Once upon a time in Chelm, a village in Poland not far from Lublin, there lived some of the wisest fools this world has ever known. The people of Chelm often did silly things, but they loved their town and they loved each other. The Chelmites also loved their moon. Every night they stood out on their front stoops and stared at the sky, watching in wonder as the moon waxed and waned. But once a month, there came a night when the moon disappeared altogether. On those nights, the people of Chelm frantically searched the dark sky. They were lost. One night, when the moon had vanished, 
The people lost their patience. We love our moon, they cried. Why does it do this to us every month? Why does it go away? The moon should stay with us. And at last, one of the wisest of the wise began to smile. I have an idea. We will capture the moon. And once we have captured it, it will be ours forever, full and radiant every night of the month, month after month. They devised a plan. The people had noticed that each month, on the clearest night, the moon appeared for a visit to the town well. They thought that the well was the moon's favorite spot to visit. This month, they decided, on the night the moon visited the well, they would gather around, secure a cement cover, and cover the well over, and, in doing so, trap the moon. Everyone agreed to the plan. And so, on the night when the moon was the fullest, they hurried to the well and gazed deep in it, and there it was, the moon, and they quietly lifted the cement cover and placed it over the well. We've caught the moon, they celebrated that night. The next morning, they gathered at the well to say good morning to their dear friend, the moon. But in the morning, the moon was gone. Someone has stolen the moon. Who is the thief, they shouted and they discovered it was the rabbi. The rabbi stole the moon. Why, the rabbi explained, to teach a lesson. Life is not something you grab and hold and own and control. We cannot catch miracles or explain them or anticipate them. We are called to look at everything in life as a miracle, light and joy, light and darkness, joy and sadness, fate and free will, because truly our lives are in between those extremes. We dwell in this world and in the world of our imagination and hopes. We must live between the reality we know and those dreams that we will never surrender, because there is joy and awe everywhere. The people of Helm asked the rabbi, so rabbi, now that you've spoiled this for us, what do we do now? With no moon, we will be forced again to live in the space between celebration and despair, between light and darkness. The rabbi nodded knowingly. Yes, as we have always lived and we will find our way as we always have. And in the meantime, we should not waste time trying to capture a moon that is beyond our grasp. Rather, set our sights closer, contemplate life here and now on Earth, because the wonders are right before our eyes. The High Holy Days remind us that we are to live as if everything is a miracle, but we should never be smug. Jewish tradition is of one voice in warning us never to depend on miracles. We should not wait for or expect a miracle when we are in trouble. We are not to assume that God will appear and save us. God cannot be counted upon to change the laws of nature or override the organic rhythm of time and space. In the Talmud, Rabbi Yanni says, Yanai says, a person should never stand in a place of danger and say, a miracle will be performed for me. This is arrogance and hubris. Rather, miracles appear more gently within the context of life itself as a means by which we come to appreciate the world and one another. Rabbi Gila Langer writes that the root of the word miracle in Spanish is mira, to see, meaning miracles are all around us. 
We just need to remember to open our eyes. Moreover, we humans are catalysts for miracles. It is our role. We are chosen to be responsible for bringing miracles to our world. We create miracles when we use AI to promote medicine and healing. We create miracles when we use the midot of the Musar movement to renew Torah in ourselves and contemporary ethics for the world. We bring miracles when we apply our ingenuity to the natural world and see life itself as miraculous. Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch, the preeminent 19th century rabbi, believed the greatest miracle is actually the survival of the Jewish people in the face of a history of suffering and adversity. David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of the state of Israel, echoes these sentiments. He said, in Israel, in order to be a realist, you actually must believe in miracles. Miracles exist because we recognize them as such. They occur when we use our human capacity for good and stop focusing on the negatives in our world. Yes, once in a great while, someone survives despite a prognosis that only promises a few days or months. From time to time, a spring is found in the desert. A new drug trial results in a cure. Nature repairs itself but typically there is much less drama involved. Miracles are really the tireless perseverance of search and rescue teams that bring families together who have been separated by war. Miracles are the remarkable focus of first responders as they rescue a drowning child from a sudden rip current. Miracle are year, miracles are years of research and development that have led to a prosthetic arm with a functional thumb capable of movement beyond imagination. In the wake of the formidable wildfires this summer in Maui, the people of Lahaina began the process of surveying the destruction and slowly putting their lives back together. In addition to the burning of property and the loss of human life, the city's 150-year-old banyan fig tree, standing taller than 60 feet, burst into flames. In the weeks following the fires, specialists examined the tree. Some say it is just too charred to be able to continue to grow while others look at the roots and see that they are still intact. Just this week, there were new reports sent across the globe from the conservationists and arbor arborists who are tending to the giant tree day and night. The tree has begun to sprout leaves again, and some of its branches are growing. It is too early to know if this historic tree will survive. But one group of environmentalists hypothesize that the banyan tree may have actually been saved by two nearby monkey pod trees. We think two large monkey pod trees saved that banyan tree because when the monkey pods burned, the extreme heat from them rose so high that the fire actually pushed over the top of the old banyan tree, perhaps sparing it. The wooden benches beneath the tree didn't burn. The light posts under the banyan tree are in perfect shape. In addition to planting more native trees and replacing those lost, there are plans to include two new monkey pod trees there as well. If a hawk can rescue a woman from a snake and two monkey pod trees can save a banyan tree 
from a wildfire. Who says miracles don't happen anymore? Shana Tova.